Hi everyone, this is Jen Gross, uh, Journey Coach Jen, and I've had some questions about how to do a bokeh technique. So this is a technique where you have a blurred back background and you have something in the forefront that's a little bit more crisp. So what we do is, I ch what I do, I choose like three or four colors. So buttercream or white is going to be a standard color. I, today I'm using the Grape Fusion Chambray Shirt, and this one without the glare is summer days. So what I do is I'm gonna start with Grape Fusion, which is the darkest. And we're gonna use our daubers, our large daubers. And so we get some ink on this. And so don't push down hard right away, but just kind of start in a circular motion and you'll see that you're starting to get some color onto the paper and how it kind of blurs out. That's what you're looking for. So we're gonna do that just a couple of times here. And so like I said, I start the circular motion and then I keep going after that and just kind of come out with this little blurred bit. Now you can go back into the middle there and deepen that up a little bit, bring out some more of the color. And if you wanna do another one, go ahead and keep adding. And you're just doing that circular motion and go back and forth with it. This is really gonna be the background so it doesn't have to be precise in any manner. After the darker color, I tend to go towards the lighter color, which is going to be, in this case, my summer days. So I have my dauber, the large dauber again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come in and just add some color into this great fusion, just in a couple areas. Again, doing that circular motion. And see, it's starting to blend a little bit in these areas where the colors meet. And you're getting, again, that blurred effect, which is what we want. And again, there's no rhyme or reason into the placement of where you put these. I just kind of tend to put them wherever I want, whatever I feel is comfortable today. Now we're going to take our chambray shirt and kind of finish up everything else. And you can blend it up into things. Make sure you're getting all the background covered. And see it kind of turns a little bit green and with the yellows and this is really kind of what you want right around here so this is the start of your background the next thing you do to create that sharp forefront is going to be taking your lighter color in my case i'm using the buttercream and the dauber and you can use stencils and a lot of times people will use a circle stencil in three different shapes but I actually today am going to use our cottage bloom die set so there's a lot of different shapes here so I've cut out the cottage bloom dies to use and I saved this scrap piece of paper so that I can do a bokeh technique now what you want to make sure is is that um, you know some of these things are right on the edges so I always have a little bit of post-it around just in case I want to um, add a little bit extra protection on some of these edges where I'm going to go in and put some ink down. So you can use anything as a stencil. Anything that you've die cut, you can definitely use that as a stencil. So again, this is just kind of protecting it so you don't go off or out of your margin of the die there. So I like to start with the big one. So I'm actually gonna start with this one. And it doesn't matter where you put your placement, but let's go right here. So the trick with this is, is to juice this up with our buttercream. Okay. And just go in an up down manner. You're not rubbing this, you're just going up and down. And so you're not moving the die any place left or right and especially since this is a flower die and not a circle die or a square die and look here I'm gonna go ahead and continue this because that's where I was telling you you want to kind of watch where you're going but this is fine because I want to use the, use this anyway so look what you get there you get a flower that's more crisp in the front and you've still got that faded background so let's put another flower over in this area and this time let's help it a little bit so that we're not cutting into there. 
Again, post-it notes come in so handy. And again, you're going up and down with your dauber. And the more you do it, the more coverage you get. You'll see that I'll fade some out here in a little bit, but this really gives you just a nice thick coverage of the color. And as we lift it up again, you can see that it um, has a little bit that's fading in on it, but most of it is pretty crisp. So let's take one of the little ones over here. Again, our post-it notes are a great friend. So let's just cover that one up for now. And I'm just gonna go really light with this one, just so it barely covers. All right, you ready to see this one? So you've got it, but it's a little bit faded, which is kind of cool. So then let's play a little bit more, bring in some more of these. I'm gonna bring this one in right about here. Again, you can use your post-its any way you want to. And again, just tapping down with the color. And the buttercream again is gonna leave you that little bit of background. Now let's take a really big one and put it right over here. So this, and it, again, no rhyme or reason, just wherever you feel comfortable putting it. So we'll just go ahead and, again, juice up your dauber. And this one we're gonna get really dark. And again, just up and down. And you can see that coverage again. Okay, so we'll pull that back and see you're getting a really pretty flower pattern. So let's take this over here and just do a little bit going off the edge. So you don't have to stay so precise. Just do a faded one here and you can see what's going on. So this is again what they call the bokeh technique. And let's put another one right here, a little small one. Again, up and down is <laughs> I hope you guys get to try this or you can try it along with me again I just choose out three colors and see what I like and then I'm going to do this one right here and I think that's gonna be my last one okay, sticky side down Now my sister shared with me, let's see if I've got it here. This is how I store my um, daubers. I actually um, have little Velcro spots for them. So I'm looking for my lovely blue, which is in the back here. My sister Erica said, ooh, I have lovely blue. Can we use lovely blue? And I said, you can use any color you want. So let me grab the lovely blue and I'll just take the buttercream off of this. Put that aside. Add my blue. And so now this is going to give you kind of a shadow. Put our lovely blue on there. I've re-inked this a little bit so you can see. So let's go ahead and do our shadow of lovely blue right here. And look at that. Isn't that cool? You're going to see a little bit of a shadow of your flower. Let's do that with the little white one here. Or not the white one, but a little tiny one. Okay. And you see? Isn't that kind of cool? So you can do it with the lights and the darks. and create this very cool bokeh technique. So I'm gonna call this done. But hopefully that helped you um, inspire your creativity. Again, you don't have to use you know, flower dyes. You can use any of the dyes that we have. Um, circles work really well, and I would choose three different sizes, a large, a medium, and a small. And again, put 
these I did together because I cut them out to use them for a different project. But if you do the circles intentionally for this, do one in different spots so you're not um, accidentally inking into the other spot. Or again, use the post-it notes. But you can come up with some really pretty backgrounds and fun ideas to play with your paper crafting. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye.